Good afternoon from Dooley Health and Care Field in Joliet, Illinois. It's time for some CCAC baseball, a doubleheader today featuring the University of St. Francis and Calumet College of St. Joseph. My name is Terry Bonadonna. On the play-by-play -play for today's matchup, 16 scheduled innings of baseball in front of us today. Let's take a look at the starting lineups first for the visitors from Calumet. Leading things off is center fielder Darius Little. Batting second, shortstop Blaze Cano. Joseph Selby bats third and plays third base. Hitting cleanup, left fielder Tommy Benson. Michael Macknick bats fifth and plays first base. Michael Perry is in right field. Batting seventh, designated hitter Nicholas Anderson. Brennan Nichols is the catcher. And batting ninth, second baseman Nino Barbosa. The starting pitcher for Calumet College of St. Joseph today is Kale Bauman. For the Fighting Saints of St. Francis, Alex Martinez leads off playing second base. Hitting second, left fielder Josh Kernbauer. Nate Maliska hits third and plays first. The cleanup hitter is right fielder Jake Klapash. Batting fifth, shortstop Brian Hidalgo. Drew Dant hits sixth at third base. John McGuire is the designated hitter. Cliff Vickers bats eighth in center field. And batting ninth, the catcher, Jake Murda. The starting pitcher today is right-hander Ethan Fleming, whose first pitch hits the inside corner for strike one. And we're underway at 12.59 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Next pitch misses away. The count evens at one ball and one strike. Darius Little leading things off against Ethan Fleming, who's making his fourth start and eighth appearance of the year. Ripped foul down the third baseline, strike two. Fleming's got a record of no wins and three losses. His ERA is an even 26. In nine innings pitched, he's allowed 26 runs on 27 hits, three walks, six strikeouts. There's a swing and a fly ball into left center field. Long run over, but it's playable for Josh Kernbauer. The left fielder makes the grab, one away in the top of the first inning. One up, one down, that brings up Blaze Cano, the shortstop. Cano is hitting 348 with 10 RBIs. Had a big day yesterday, particularly in game two as he takes ball one outside. That was the case for most of the Crimson Wave yesterday. Struggled in game one, thrived in game two. They scored just two runs in the opener of yesterday's doubleheader, nine runs in the second. There's a slow roller to the left side. Tough play for the shortstop, Hidalgo. Charges, gloves, throws. Not in time. It's an infield single for Blaze Cano. A little bit of a double clutch there on the play from Hidalgo. And that's what led to Cano being able to reach base. A close play at first. Difficult play for sure for Brian Hidalgo. He was able to glove the ball cleanly, but... While he was on the move, had just a little bit of trouble getting it out of his glove. So here's Joseph Selby with a man at first base and one out. Selby takes ball one. Joseph Selby's a 286 hitter. He's driven in 10 runs this season. Quick throw over to first base. Cano dives back to the bag. It is a miserable day for baseball as... Evidenced by the fact that, by my count, there are four fans in attendance today. So far, we're early in what's going to be a long day. Two hopper to third, picked up by Dant. He throws to second for one, not in time at first. So they get the fielder's choice, five to four. And there are two outs now in the inning. Joseph Selby is safe at first base. Good job by him hustling down the line and making sure to avoid what would have been an inning-ending double play had he been out at first. Quick turn by the Fighting Saints, but the ball just wasn't hit hard enough to turn two. Here's Tommy Benson. The temperature's hovering around 40 degrees right now. It was similar yesterday at the start of that doubleheader, which began an hour later, 2 o'clock. Strike over the outside corner, 0-1 on Benson. Tommy Benson's batting 321, three homers, and a team-high 26 runs batted in. 
The 0-1 is golfed out to left field, down for a base hit in front of Kernbauer. Second hit of the inning for Calumet. Joseph Selby advances to second base. Two on, two out, and Michael Macknick will try to get a run in here in the top of the first. The difference between today and yesterday, yesterday the sun was out. The wind wasn't blowing. It's not blowing hard today either. That's not a huge factor right now. It's a lot wetter today. It snowed this morning. That snow has melted by now, but it's left a moist sheen around the ballpark in the seats and on the field. So Michael Macknick takes ball one down low. Macknick's hitting 316, three homers, 18 batted in. He hits a high pop-up, shallow right center field. Cliff Vickers comes in on it. Vickers, the center fielder, makes the catch. And the inning comes to a close. Despite a pair of hits, no runs for Calumet in the top of the first inning. They leave two. On to the bottom of the first. St. Francis will come to bat for the first time in a scoreless tie. Bottom of the first, St. Francis comes to bat for the first time. Alex Martinez, Josh Kernbauer, and Nate Maliska are the scheduled batters. Klapash, Hidalgo, Dant, McGuire, Vickers, and Murda make up the rest of the lineup facing the ace of the Calumet staff. Sophomore right-hander Kale Bauman making his fifth start of the year, seventh appearance. Bauman is 2-1 and one with a 3.99 ERA. In 29 and a third innings pitched, he's allowed 15 runs, 13 of them earned on 31 hits. Got 19 strikeouts, eight walks, and he's got a ground ball to short here as Alex Martinez is retired 6-3. to three. Blaze Cano makes the play cleanly. First pitch of the ball game from Cale Bauman results in the first out. Here's Josh Kernbauer. Fighting Saints scored in the first inning in both games of yesterday's doubleheader. As Josh Kernbauer digs in and takes strike one over the inside corner. A little bit different yesterday. They were the road team. Those games yesterday were played here at Dooley Health and Care Field, the home of St. Francis. As Kernbauer fouls it off his foot for strike two but they were official road games because they were rescheduled from tomorrow. So series was originally two games here today and then two games tomorrow in Whiting, Indiana. But Calumet looked at the forecast, realized Saturday was going to be a tough one for them. So they asked if they could move the games here 
and play them on Thursday instead. It all worked out. Swing and a miss. Kernbauer goes down on strikes. Two away. Good start for Kale Bauman. So these games are as scheduled. Yesterday's were the ones that weren't. And so today's games, the Saints are back to being the home team on their home field and wearing their white uniforms. Every conference game they've played this year has been on this field. This is number seven. As Nate Maliska digs in, two outs, nobody on base. Quick start for Kale Bauman. He's gotten two outs on four pitches. One of them was a strikeout. He misses the zone for the first time with ball one on Nate Maliska. Maliska's hitting 362. Nine runs batted in for the year. He pokes it foul to the left off the screen. One and one. Calumet was in their home uniforms yesterday. Today they're back in their traveling gray pants with the black jersey tops. 1-1 one, one misses low and in. Two balls and one strike. No score early, like I said yesterday. It was a rather different story. A lot of early offense, primarily from St. Francis. That's flipped out to left field down the line and a fair ball as it sinks down into the corner. Tommy Benson was unable to cut it off, and now he has trouble getting it out of that corner. But Meliska stops at second base. It is a two-out double. No error on Benson. His inability to cut it off is what allowed Meliska to take second base, so the bobble out in deep left didn't have any impact on advancing any further. But Meliska is in scoring position with two down, and Jake Klapash has a chance to pick up an RBI here. He's got five of them this year, 419 hitter. Jake Klapash tries to check his swing, and he does take inside for ball one. Lepash had a real nice day at the plate yesterday. Most of the Fighting Saints did. They scored 18 combined runs between the two games. That's fouled off. Count evens at one. It was their first doubleheader sweep of the season. 7-2 victory in game one, and then a narrow 11-9 triumph in game two. 1-1. One, one. Bounced foul down the first base side, one and two. The two games followed a similar script for a while in that the Saints jumped out to a big early lead. In game one, they had their top pitcher, Ryan Daly, on the mound, and he was able to lock it down. Game two, they struggled to hold their big early lead. Ground ball up the middle, ranging to his right. Barbosa makes a sliding stop, doesn't have a play at first. He throws home, and Maliska scampers back to third base. It's an infield hit for Jake Klapash, and there are runners at the corners with two down. Heady play all around. If that throw had gone to first base, Maliska, who never slowed down around third base, or at least who didn't slow down initially around third base, probably would have been able to score. So he took an aggressive turn around third. Barbosa recognized that, immediately planted and threw home. He would have cut down Maliska by a mile had he not had the presence of mind, Maliska that is, to head back to third base. Brian Hidalgo takes strike one. Such a promising start to this inning for Bauman. At the first two outs on four pitches. First pitch ground out and then a three pitch strikeout. Now he's in trouble as Hidalgo bounces it to third base. Charging and gloving is Selby. Throw to first is wild. A run comes in to score as the ball goes up the first base line. Jake Klapash stops at third base. Brian Hidalgo heads into second on well, a go as an RBI hit and an error. one nothing St. Francis on three consecutive two-out hits. Two of them stayed on the infield. Tough luck for Kale Bauman and Calumet. The double to Meliska was one thing, but to give up back-to-back -back infield singles with two outs to allow a run. Not a whole lot you can do about that as the pitcher. Drew Dant takes ball one. So the Saints strike first for the third straight game in this series. They have played every inning of this three-game set with the lead. Ball inside, 2-0 on Drew Dant. 
Hidalgo is at second base. Klapash is at third. On the throwing error by Joseph Selby. There's the line drive in right center field. That's a legitimate hit for St. Francis. Drew Dance splits the gap. The ball rolls all the way to the wall. Hidalgo comes in to score. Klapash ahead of him. It's a two-run double, three to nothing, fighting Saints. Two-out hitting was a theme yesterday for both of these teams, and it has been again early on today. Four straight two-out base runners after Bauman appeared to be on his way to a really easy inning. Here's the seventh batter, John McGuire. He swings at the first pitch, and he smacks it into left field. Dant is being waved around third base. Tommy Benson comes up throwing. It's cut off. An RBI single for McGuire. It's 4 to nothing. Five in a row have reached base with two outs in the first. And the Saints have opened up a big early lead in this seven-inning game one contest. Here's Cliff Vickers. Vickers swings and misses. Saints have not been wasting any time. Hidalgo reached on that infield single on an 0-1 count. For Drew Dant, the double came on 2-0. McGuire singled on the first pitch. Vickers jumped on the first pitch as well, unable to connect, though. He jumped at the first pitch, not so much on it. That's flipped into left center field. That's going to fall in for a base hit. Darius Little over to cut it off as John McGuire heads to third base. Cliff Vickers gets into second. It's a double. Six consecutive hits for the Fighting Saints. That's their third double to go along with three singles. Well, yesterday, the Saints certainly came to hit. 19 total runs, or 18 rather, 18 total runs in the two games. But almost all of their hits were singles. That has not been the case today. As Jake Murta takes the ball low. Already they've got three extra base hits in the first inning. Jake Murta's the ninth man to bat this inning. The first two were retired easily. But nothing's gone Kale Bauman's way ever since. Murda takes a strike over the outer edge, one and one. Jake Murda, the catcher for the Fighting Saints here in game one. Starting for the ninth time this season behind the plate. He's a 240 hitter. One and one count. Ground ball left side, tough play, and nobody can reach it. One run is in. Here comes Vickers around third base. He scores without a play. A two-run single for Jake Murda. The score is six to nothing. Seventh consecutive hit for the Saints. And another tough break for Kale Bauman. And you can't really say that about the last few before Murda's. But Jake Murda hit a seeing eye ground ball to the left side. Just out of the reach of the third baseman, Joseph Selvi. Blaze Cano, the shortstop, made a diving effort at it. And Cano did get his glove on it, but it ricocheted off his glove and into left field. That allowed the second run to score. Mound visit from Brian Nowakowski out of the Calumet College of St. Joseph dugout. Crimson Wave came into this series hot. Winners of four of their last five games. They were 11 and 13 overall and one of the top teams in conference at four and two. And here we are now day two and game three of this series and they have been completely out muscled. Outscored so far. This is the 17th inning of the series. And they've been outscored 24 to 11. Alex Martinez gets his second at bat of the inning, looking for some redemption after he grounded out on the first pitch of the game from Bauman. This time he takes the first offering. It's up and in for ball one. It's been a long first inning for Bauman, but he hasn't thrown a ton of pitches. Every at-bat has been quick. 
Ball inside, 2-0. Saints been trying to jump on him early. That last pitch was his 25th, which is not a small number for one inning, but it is when you're facing your 10th batter. There's a swing and a high pop-up into shallow right. This should end the inning as Michael Perry comes in and makes the catch right along the foul line. So finally, the first does come to a close, but not before the Fighting Saints score six runs on seven consecutive two-out hits. We'll go to the second inning, 6 nothing. a great start for the Saints. Ethan Fleming back to the mound with a big lead this time as he faces Michael Perry. Perry swings the first pitch, grounds it down the third base line and under the glove of Drew Dant out to left field. Perry takes the turnaround first, heads to second base. Throw from Kernbauer is just a little bit late. And Michael Perry is safe at second to lead off the top of the second inning. Good start for Calumet as they try to break through here against St. Francis right-hander Ethan Fleming. After Fleming shut them down in the top of the first inning, and then the Saints came back with a huge bottom of the frame. It's a double for Perry. And the batter is Nicholas Anderson. Third hit of the game for Kelly Met. We've had 10 of them already. There's nobody out in the top of the second. Strike one called on Nicholas Anderson. Other than when Ryan Daly was on the mound yesterday, we didn't really see too many pitchers who got consistent outs. The 0-1 is over for a strike, 0-2. I'm not talking about just for St. Francis, but for Calumet. These are two teams with very lofty ERAs. Calumet's is over 8. St. Francis is just under 12 coming in. There's a ground ball to the right side. Gloved cleanly by Alex Martinez, whose throw to first is in time to retire Anderson. Michael Perry advances to third base on the play. But with one away, the batter will be Brennan Nichols. We're still early, but when you've got a six-run lead, the outs are the most important thing, so the Saints are happy with that one, even though it does advance the runner. Here's Brennan Nichols and an RBI chance. Nichols takes the first pitch outside, ball one. The primary example of what I was talking about as far as most pitchers struggling in this series was game two yesterday. Ground ball foul past third, one and one. Mac Malcheski did pitch well. He gave up three runs in five innings as the starter for the Saints. He departed with a 10 to two lead, but from that point on, it was constant chipping away, chipping away from Calumet. They eventually lost by just two. Ball low, two and one on Brennan Nichols. Nichols had an RBI in game one yesterday. A couple of hits in that contest. He went 0 for 4 with a walk in game two. He lines this one out to the left field, but it's foul. And the count goes to 2-2. Two two. Not foul by a lot there. Another 16 inches or so to the right. And that drives in the first run of the game for Calumet. 
They're knocking at the door. They did collect two hits in the top of the first inning, but neither of them were able to turn into runs. Two and two. Fleming could use his first strike out of the game right here. The runner at third base in less than two outs. He misses outside instead. Three and two. Fleming is not a guy who strikes out a ton of people. Six of them in nine innings this year. Ten innings, including the first one today. Payoff pitch coming to Calumet's number eight hitter. Nichols skies it out to center field. It's not deep. Cliff Vickers is coming in on it. Perry goes back to third base to tag. He'll try to score. The throw from Vickers is not in time. It's a sacrifice fly, and Calumet St. Joe's is on the board. Thanks to the leadoff double from Perry, that turns into a run on Brennan Nichols' sacrifice fly. Six to one. And it's early enough in the game for the Crimson Wave that they'll happily take that even if they don't score again this inning. So you get a run at a time. It's nice to begin to chip away here, especially considering they've got Kale Bauman on the mound. Bauman obviously didn't pitch well in the first inning, but he's been their best guy this year. So I'm sure they're counting on him to keep this one about where it is, not let the Saints pull away. Nothing and one on Nino Barbosa. He fouls it back, 0-2. Barbosa's the second baseman, hitting 273. Had two hits and three at-bats yesterday. Just barely got a piece of that one. He stays alive. Still nothing in two. Top of the order due up next. Calumet got a pair of hits in the first inning. Didn't score here in the second. They were able to manufacture one. They've gotten just one hit. But they have scored as Barbosa takes high. Right now it's two outs, nobody on. But the Saints were in the same position last inning, and they turned it into six runs. So they're not ready to count it until they get the third out, which they do on Barbosa's swing through strike three. First strike out of the game for Ethan Fleming. Calumet gets a run on a leadoff double and a sack fly. We'll go to the bottom of the second. 6-1, the home team on top. Six one St. Francis leads bottom of the second inning. Josh Kernbauer, Nate Maliska, Jake Klapash do up. Kale Bauman on the hill for CCSJ. His first pitch to Kernbauer is popped into shallow right field. Backing up towards the foul line and into foul territory. The first baseman Michael Macknick makes the catch. One away. Well, the good news for Calumet is they get the first out on just one pitch. The good news for St. Francis is the same thing happened in the last inning, and they ended up getting six runs. So maybe it's a good omen. We'll see. 
Nate Maliska is the man who started that hit parade in the first inning. His two-out double was the first of seven consecutive hits. He takes ball one low and in. For Maliska, it was the sixth double and eighth extra base hit this year. He came in slugging better than 500 for the season. Ball outside, 2-0. Saints led game two of yesterday's doubleheader, seven to nothing at one point. They jumped out to a similar lead even earlier here in this one. Fouled off by Maliska, two and one. They had a big lead in game one yesterday as well. Seven to nothing in that game. Ground ball down the first baseline, moving to his left, Macknick. Makes the grab and carries it to first base. Three unassisted. Two outs. Two outs, nobody on. We've been in this position before. Jake Klapash comes up as Bauman tries to make it a 1-2-3 inning. Klapash reached on an infield single in the first. He takes ball one. Two of the Saints' seven hits in the first inning were on the infield. A third one was knocked down by a diving Blaze Cano at short, but it did then trickle into the outfield after that. Fouled back, one and one. Not to say that the six-run rally was all luck. They also had three hard-hit doubles. And one hard-hit single. Ball low and in, two and one. Hitters count for Jake Klapash. Yesterday, Klapash had two hits in game one of the doubleheader. Had two hits and reached base three times in game two. Inside, three and one. No walks yet issued by Bauman. This is his first three ball count. Klapash is in the driver's seat here. He swings and rolls it off his foot. That's a foul ball. It's also, I think, a bruise for Jake Klapash, depending on where exactly that one hit. I think it got up high on the foot or on the ankle. So he limps around just a little bit to try to walk off the pain of fouling it off of himself. And when he digs back in, the count will be full. If he does reach base, Brian Hidalgo will bat next. Kale Bauman trying to make up for a rocky first inning with a 1-2-3 second. His 3-2. Fouled back. Count remains full on the left-handed hitting right fielder for the Saints. Inside, he walked him. First walk issued today by either pitcher. It's another two-out base runner for the Fighting Saints. In the game, they've had eight base runners, and all of them have come with two down, which is great when you consider that every team is always looking for two-out hitting. It's a huge skill if you can do it, but it also makes it a little bit harder to score. Obviously, it's worked out well so far for the Saints, but they can't keep counting on stringing together base runners with two outs. Hidalgo takes ball one, low and outside. So as much as they've loved their two-out hitting, they would like to do it earlier in the inning if given the choice, which nobody has yet. Hidalgo checks the swing. He takes ball two. All of a sudden, some control problems from Bauman, who had been so sharp up until this point. Walked Klapash now, a rare 2-0 and count on Hidalgo. Big swing and a miss. It's two and one. Brian Hidalgo is another guy who reached on an infield single his first time up. He's one for one. And a 333 hitter this year. That batting average went up about 100 points just yesterday. Floated into right field, playable for Michael Perry. Came in a little bit too far on it. Had to take a last second step back, but he does put it away and end the inning. Despite the two out walk, no runs for St. Francis 
On to the third, 6-1 Saints. Top of the order for Calumet St. Joe's in the top of the third inning. Darius Little leads things off against Ethan Fleming. And the first pitch misses high for ball one. Little went out to left field in the first inning. He's 0 for 1 in the game. Had just one hit in the doubleheader yesterday. Ball two, he's ahead in the count. Little's hitting 290, 12 RBIs. Trying to bounce back after a rough start to this series. He takes up and in, 3-0. and In game one, yesterday afternoon, he went 0 for 4 with three strikeouts. And then in game two, he did have a double. But that was his only hit in six trips to the plate. So one for nine total on the day. Called strike, it's 3-1. and one. Fleming has one strikeout. He hasn't walked anybody yet today. Calumet has three hits through the first two innings. Little takes a strike. Count goes full. They're trying to get their leadoff man on for the second consecutive inning. Fleming's gotten himself back in the at-bat. That's knocked into left field, a base hit for Darius Little. So Fleming challenged him. He made him earn it, but he did earn it. Second hit of the weekend for Little. And the leadoff man does indeed reach for the second straight inning. One on, nobody out. Blaze Cano is the hitter. Last inning, that leadoff batter reaching was a double. And they were able to use that double to get a run thanks to a ground out and then a sack fly. This is just a single from Little, but so often those do turn into doubles with him. He's got good speed. Nine for ten, swiping bases this year. Ethan Fleming is obviously aware of that as he takes a throw to first base. Blaze Cano awaits the first pitch. He swings at it and fouls it off to the right out of play. Strike one. B-L-A-Z-E, just the way you'd think it's spelled. Blaze Cano is one for one. He reached on an infield single in the first inning. A tough play by Brian Hidalgo, the shortstop. Cano takes the ball outside, one and one. Fly ball into right field. It's well hit. Backing up and making the grab is Jake Klapash. Darius Little has to retreat to first base. One away. Now Little takes off for second as the throw back to the infield is mishandled. And Darius Little advances 90 feet. Good base running from him. A mistake from the Fighting Saints. Moves a runner into scoring position. Here's Joseph Selby. Selby's 0 for 1. He grounded into a fielder's choice in the first. That's kind of been taken off the table by Darius Little advancing to second on the Saints' inability to get the ball back to the infield. Strike one called on Selby. Joseph Selby 
entered today's game with a 286 average. The 0 1 is taken downstairs. One ball, one strike. Tommy Benson on deck as the Crimson Wave try to take advantage of a man in scoring position early in the inning for the second straight time. Swing and a miss, one and two. St. Francis scored six two out runs in the first. They've got a commanding lead right now. Long way to go in this game, even though it is a shorter than usual game. Seven innings. Ball in the dirt. Good block by Jake Murda, two and two. I say shorter than usual, but actually in conference play, St. Francis has only had one nine in a game out of their first six. And that came last night, that 11 to nine win. 2-2, two, two. fouled away. There are more double headers in the conference this year. Consequently, more seven inning games. Standard setup is seven innings for game one, nine innings for game two. In previous years, they played more three game series in this conference. There's a fly ball into right center field. Vickers and Klepash converge. Jake Klepash makes the catch. Darius Little tags, and he takes third base, but there are two outs now. The batter is Tommy Benson. So the change in schedule means more total innings because if you're playing a four-game series instead of a three-game series, you've got more going on, but it also means fewer nine inning games because there are no single standalone games. Fly ball hit by Benson on the first pitch right out to Cliff Vickers in center field. Vickers comes in a few paces, makes the catch and retires the side. Three straight fly outs after the leadoff single. Ethan Fleming pitches around that base runner and keeps his team in the lead as we go to the bottom of the third, six to one, St. Francis. Drew Dant, John McGuire, Cliff Vickers for the Fighting Saints in the bottom of the third. Looking to add to a five-run advantage against Kale Bauman, who has settled down after that rocky first inning. He's recorded four outs against the last five hitters. He gets Dant to swing and miss, strike one. Saints got seven consecutive hits in the first. They haven't had any outside of that stretch. Dant had arguably the biggest of the seven, a two-run double. He later scored one himself as well. Called strike two. He's behind in the count. The sophomore Bauman looks to put the senior Dant away. Righty versus righty. Outside, ball one. Drew Dant has been a big bat this year. 386 hitter. He takes high. His two RBIs earlier today gave him 15 for the season. And he is the team's leader. 
He has started every game this year. So he takes the ball downstairs, full count. And has spent some time on the pitcher's mound as well. Mostly recently, two of his three appearances this year have come this week. Amped his second save of the season yesterday. He pops this one up behind home plate. That's a foul ball. And it's out of play. Seventh pitch of the at-bat coming up. Good fight. Dant trying to stay alive. He hits it in the air out to right field. That's a foul ball. And it's out of anybody's reach as it bounces into the stands. Still three and two. Kale Bauman from Griffith, Indiana. Make that Garrett, Indiana. First name that starts with a G, close enough. There's also a Gary, Indiana. Are there any other G first names that have cities in them in Indiana? There's a ground ball out to left field. Drew Dant is two for two. Singles past the diving Joseph Selby. That's the first hit since the first inning for St. Francis. The leadoff man reaches for the first time today. John McGuire is one for one. He swung at the first pitch he saw in the first inning and hit an RBI single. Runner on the move, swung on and missed, throw to second base. Dant is out. Throw had him beat by a wide margin. Just had to wait to see if there was a tag. Looked like a hit and run. McGuire was not able to do his part as he swung and missed. And it kind of left Dant hanging out to dry. So Dant is the first out. Base is empty. McGuire takes a ball. With that caught stealing, St. Francis is... Stolen base success rate this year is down to just 50%. They're 7 of 14. The 0 1 to McGuire. Low for a ball. 1 and 1. Ground ball left side. Sliding stop by Selby, the third baseman. Gets to his feet and guns it over to first. Two down. So despite the leadoff single, a quick two outs this inning. And it's up to Cliff Vickers to try to keep it alive. Vickers is one for one with the double. He also scored a run. Pushes a bunt to the third base side, but it's foul. Game one yesterday, Vickers went two for three with two RBIs, had two more hits in game two. He's got a season average coming into today all the way up to 275. It's gone up further today. Ball low and in one and one. I don't have my calculator in front of me, so I don't know exactly what it's sitting at, but it's higher than 275 after grabbing a hit in his first at bat. Line drive to short, right at Blaze Cano, and the inning is over. Hard hit ball, but a tough break from Cliff Vickers, and the Saints go down more or less in order in the bottom of the third. There was one hit, but thanks to a caught stealing, nobody left on base. To the fourth, 6-1 Saints.
Michael Macknick leads off the top of the fourth for Cal St. Joe's. They trail six to one as Ethan Fleming winds up for the first pitch. And Macknick drills it in a right center field. A base hit on the first pitch of the inning. He rounds first and heads towards second as the ball skips up against the wall. It's a leadoff double and a good start to the inning for the Crimson Wave. Starting to get late in this one. We're down to our final four innings of play, which I know means still more than half the game in front of us, but tracing five runs at this stage, even if nothing else changes for the Fighting Saints, you are guaranteed for Calumet to lose if you can't put together at least one multi-run inning. So they've had the leadoff man on base three straight frames. But what are they going to do with it? Can they turn this into a big rally? Michael Perry swings at the first pitch, and that's a good continuation for the Crimson Wave. Base hit to left field. A couple of hard hit balls in a row. The one into the right center field gap, and that one just a ground scorcher for Michael Perry, who's now two for two in the game. Macknick's at third. Perry is at first. At the corners, nobody out for Nicholas Anderson. I don't know how long Ethan Fleming intends to go in this game or how long Brian Mahalik had intends to let him go. He did pitch two days ago against Lewis. Didn't last very long in that game. He just got a little work in between starts as he misses low for ball one on Nicholas Anderson. Anderson is 0 for 1 with a ground out. It was the story of yesterday's games. A lot of ground balls. It has not been the story today. Fouled off at the plate. One and one. Calumet hasn't hit very much at all on the ground. And Anderson, four to three put out. His first time up was the only ground ball out of the game. Of course, Michael Perry just hit a ground ball single. But most of everything has been lifted by Calumet. So you're not... Expecting necessarily a double play here, as much as the Saints would love it. Infielders are playing back. The 1 1 pitch. Knocked into right field, and Klapash dives for it. Klapash can't come up with it. It's another base hit, the third in a row. Nicholas Anderson brings home Michael Macknick to make it 6 to 2, and Michael Perry makes it all the way to third base on the third consecutive hit. Another big hit for Anderson. He has been full of them this weekend. In yesterday's doubleheader, he went a combined three for six with three RBIs. He's knocked in his first run today. Eight now for the season. Half of them have come in this series. Brennan Nichols swings the first pitch and fouls it off. Strike one. Perry's at third, Anderson is at first. St. Francis at one point in this game had seven straight hits. Calumet trying to replicate that. They've got three in a row. The 0-1 breaks over the heart of the plate, nothing in two. Brennan Nichols drove in a run his first time up, a sacrifice fly. It was the only run of the game for Calumet up until moments ago. On 0-2, Fleming misses away. One ball and two strikes. Ethan Fleming's been hit a lot this year. Opponents came in hitting better than 500 against him for the season. Foul tipped, still 1-2. and two. So it's not a huge surprise that Calumet already has eight hits in this game. But the key for Fleming has been Limiting where those runners go. They've stranded three so far. Fouled away. Still one and two. Still nobody out, though, this inning. So you're not thinking about stranding base runners as much as you're thinking of just getting that first out. Another one-two pitch. Ground ball to the third. That's fair this time. Drew Dant throws to second and gets the force there. Nice job by Dant. Perry wasn't going anywhere from third base, so Dant gave him a quick look, made sure 
He was stuck at third base and then went to the next leading runner, which was Nicholas Anderson coming from first. He's retired. Brennan Nichols is safe at first, meaning we'll get a courtesy runner here. Let's see who it was yesterday. They used Jacob Gunn as their primary courtesy runner. I didn't get a number on this one to confirm that it was him. First and third. It is Jacob Gunn at first base. Nino Barbosa is the batter. Pick off throw to first. Barbosa runs well. So a ground ball doesn't guarantee you a double play, but best thing you can ask for right now. One run is in this inning. Michael Macknick scored on Nicholas Anderson's RBI single. Barbosa takes the ball downstairs. 1-0. Next pitch, up and in the zone, up in the zone and over the inside corner. One and one on Barbosa, who struck out swinging his first time up. The only strike out of the game so far for Fleming. This time he grounds it to short, Hidalgo waits back, flips to second, gets the force, and that's all they get as a run crosses home plate and makes the score six to three. Another fielder's choice. Barbosa is safe at first. Jacob Gunn is retired, 6-4. to four. Back to the top of the order. And Darius Little. Well, there's that crooked number I was talking about for Kelly. Met that they were going to need at some point. Probably need more than this at some point as well, but it's a good start. If they go every inning without scoring and every other inning they add one run to what they've been able to accomplish, they'll tie this game up before it ends. Darius Little takes a strike. One and one. Little singled last time up and was stranded at third. Pickoff throw to first, and they've got him in a rundown. Barbosa being chased back to first base. Fleming tracks him down and applies the tag. One, three, four, one. On the caught stealing, and the inning comes to a close. Two runs on three hits. Nobody left on base. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth. 6-3, St. Francis. Jake Murda leads off the bottom of the fourth inning for St. Francis. They're in good shape in this game, leading by three as we enter the later innings. But they have not been able to get a man into scoring position since the first, and they'd like to change that. They don't want to sit on their laurels here. So a chance to add to the lead with Jake Murda and then the top of the order. Martinez and Kernbauer also due to hit against Kale Bauman, who has settled down after... A shaky opening. His first pitch to Jake Murda is a called strike. Murda's one for one with a two-run single. Saints got seven consecutive hits in the first. First time through the batting order, they went a combined seven for nine. Foul tipped, 0-2. Second time through the batting order, Murda is the number nine hitter. But so far, 
They are one for seven with a walk the second time through. So Ballman's done a much better job this second time around. Third rotation will start after Murda's at bat. Murda's at bat continues as he takes ball one low. One walk, one strikeout so far today for the right-hander, Kale Ballman. Sophomore who has been the best pitcher on the team this year. They need it. Their offense has been their calling card. Ground ball left side. Cano makes a sliding stop in the hole. The shortstop's throw to first is not in time. Call it an infield hit for Jake Murda. His second hit today. And to almost the exact same spot. This time Cano made the nice sliding stop. Last time around, Cano tried to make a diving play and was not able to make it. Courtesy runner over at first base. Alex Milkars. So he'll run for the catcher, Murda. Bunted to third base, scooped up by Selby. Throw to first, retires Alex Martinez. He does his job advancing the runner with one down. It'll be Josh Kernbauer's turn to hit. So it is their first man in scoring position since the first inning. Let's see if they can add that insurance run here in the bottom of the fourth. Seven inning game, game one of a doubleheader. Mentioned earlier, the seven innings has become the norm for the Fighting Saints. Ball low. This is their fourth doubleheader of the conference season. And naturally, in all four of them, game one went seven innings. Well, in the first three, this would be, of course, the fourth. Called strike one. It's even on Kernbauer. But even a nine-inning game will end after seven if one team or the other has a lead of greater than ten runs, which has happened to the Saints twice this season. Filed away one and two in the second half, in fact, of each of their first two doubleheaders. So last night was the first time all year that they got to play a nine-inning conference game. It worked out all right for them, although I think they would have preferred to finish it after seven because Calumet kept coming and coming after that. Fouled away by Kernbauer. Josh Kernbauer is 0 for 2. He has struck out and fouled out, hitting 263 for the year. He had a pair of hits yesterday. Not here, struck him out swinging. Milkars advances to third on the wild pitch, but Kernbauer is retired at first base. Two down. Good base running by Milkars, recognizing that ben Brendan Nichols had to gather and make the throw down to first. He wasn't even going to look at third base. So he does advance, but two outs now, and it's up to Nate Maliska to get him in. Melisca takes ball one. He's one for two with a double and a run scored and a ground out. Saints have out hit Calumet so far today. Nine of them in the game. Filed off left side. It's one and one. Calumet currently is at seven, including three last inning. Top of the fifth will feature the top of the order for the Crimson Wave. Melissa files it off. He's down to his final strike, one and two. Unlike the Saints, Crimson Wave have not been able to put together a big inning. But they've had a steady stream of base runners. Saints would rather, rather not have to face that in a tight game. 1-2 is popped into shallow left field, coming in and making the catch on the sink is Tommy Benson to end the inning. Benson seemed like he had a beat on that one, and then the ball just kept dropping. He had to lean over to make the play. Leadoff single goes nowhere for the Saints. They leave a man at third base, onto the fifth. It's 6-3, to three, St. Francis.
top of the fifth. Six to three. St. Francis leads Cal St. Joe's. Top of the order for the Crimson Wave. Darius Little leads things off. Ethan Fleming still doing the pitching for the Fighting Saints. First pitch from Fleming to Little is stroked in the left field. A base hit for Little. Eighth hit of the game for Calumet. And the leadoff man reaches for the fourth straight inning. In the previous three instances, they got him home twice. And on the third occasion, which was Darius Little back in the third. He was stranded at third base. So they've done a good job of getting base runners around. Blaze Cano steps in, swings the first pitch, and shoots it down the right field line. That's a fair ball. Down into the corner. Darius Little runs to third base and doesn't slow down as he chugs home. Blaze Cano makes it into third base, standing up safely with a triple, an RBI triple. That makes the score 6-4. Well, if it weren't for the six straight runs that St. Francis scored in the bottom of the first inning, I think Calumet would be feeling really good about this game because their pitcher since then has settled down. He's been great. But their offense has been really successful all game. They've had at least one base runner in every inning. Now nine total hits. There's a tapper back to the mound. The throw comes home, and Cano is easily out at home plate. Even with all the offense that they've been able to conduct over the last few innings, they got very aggressive there, sending Cano on contact with nobody out in the inning, and it backfired. He was thrown out one to two. Joseph Selby is safe at first base on the fielder's choice. But one away now. The batter is Tommy Benson. We'll see if that's a big momentum shift for the Fighting Saints. And for the Crimson Wave, maybe it slows them down a bit. Tommy Benson is one for two. He takes the first pitch for a strike. Nine hits, four runs. You're only in your fifth inning of work. I think any coach would be thrilled with offensive production like that. Ball low, one and one. But context is everything. If the score were four to nothing with this kind of offensive production, you'd be on cloud nine. When you're down six to four with this kind of offensive production, all of a sudden it doesn't quite feel like you've done enough. There's another tapper back to the mound, picked up by Fleming. Throw to first, retires Benson. Selby advances to second on the play, two down. Worked very much like a sacrifice bunt. Don't tell Benson's batting average that. Michael Macknick will bat with a man on and two down. Macknick doubled and scored in the fourth. He's one for two. Fleming trying to make this a very quick inning despite the run scoring. Ball one. Among their nine hits, two doubles, one triple, six singles. We've not seen either side hit a homer yet today. There was just one home run in yesterday's doubleheader. Over the outer edge of the plate, one and one on Macknick. Fleming trying to get through the fifth with the lead intact. He's one strike away. One and two, Michael Perry is on deck. But he'll bat only if Macknick reaches base. Long look into the catcher, Jake Murda. Fleming comes set, looking for his second strikeout of the game. Instead, it's lifted into left field. Kernbauer comes on and now backs off, has to play it on a hop. Around third base, Joseph Selby comes in to score. A two-out RBI single for Michael Macknick, and it's a one-run game. Calumet has scored five runs unanswered, and they trail by only one. It was six to nothing back in the first inning. But as expected, Cale Ballman has settled in. I don't know if it was expected that he would settle into the extent that he has. Three straight zeros on the board, but you knew he wasn't going to give up 
six runs in an inning again. Mostly because if you do that twice, you don't make it to the end of the second inning. Fouled off to the right side by Michael Perry. Strike one. Perry's perfect today. Two for two, a single, a double, and two runs scored. But the Saints are going to have to turn their offense back up again. Well, they probably knew that. The way their pitching staff has struggled this year. Their eight-run lead was not safe yesterday. Neither was their sixth today. Their six-run lead today. Ball high, one and one. It's been all Calumet since the end of the first inning. They still trail. Popped foul and out of play. One and two. I know we see a lot of them, and I've, I've talked about the fact today that there have been a lot of them here at Dooley Health and Care Field this year, but it's still hard to get used to those seven-inning games. The end really sneaks up on you. For as poorly as things are going right now for the Saints, they're still just seven outs away from a victory. Ball downstairs, two and two. And it still feels kind of early, but it really is not. That is the tying run, though, over at first base, Michael Macknick. Two and two on Michael Perry. He pops it out of play once again. Still two balls and two strikes. Sixth batter of the inning. Calumet's got three hits this inning. Ten for the game. They have not drawn any walks yet. That ball's fouled away. Nor had anybody hit by a pitch or reach on an air. So it's been do it yourself or you're not going to do it. And they have been doing it themselves. Swing and a miss. He got him to chase one outside for strike three. Second strike out of the game for Fleming. And this one was huge with a tying run on base in the top of the fifth. We go to the bottom of the inning. Six to five, St. Francis leads. Jake Klapash leads off the bottom of the fifth inning for St. Francis. They are in very serious need all of a sudden of some insurance. Klapash is a good guy to pick you up. He's been on base twice today. Single and a walk. He has one run scored as he takes ball one from Kale Bauman. Bauman gave up six runs on seven hits in the first inning. Last three innings combined, no runs on two hits. He falls behind Klapash, though. 2-0. For Calumet, one run in the second, two in the fourth, two in the fifth. They're right back in it. Ground ball right side. Barbosa moves to his left, grabs and throws, one down. Jacob Jerka is warming up in the St. Francis bullpen. Ethan Fleming was able to get a strikeout of Michael Perry to end the top half of the fifth, leaving the tying run on base. 
We'll see if that's his swan song in the game or they send it back to him in the sixth to try to keep this score where it is. Brian Hidalgo fouls off the first pitch of his at-bat, strike one. Hidalgo's one for two with an infield single and a run scored. He's also flown out. He bounces this one off of his foot. That's a foul ball and strike two. He's shaken up as he immediately fell to the ground after hitting that ball off of himself. Hidalgo does not wear a shin guard in the batter's box, which is a rarity among players these days, it feels like. Couldn't tell exactly where it got him, but it's never comfortable and doubly so, doubly uncomfortable, I guess, on a day like this. It is cold. 42 degrees at first pitch. I think it's gone up a tick or two since then. But no sun to speak of. It's a damp day. Hidalgo's in short sleeves. He takes the ball low and away, one and two which has nothing to do with the soreness he feels after fouling the ball off his foot, but I imagine he's cold, that's all. Swing and a miss, strike three. Hidalgo runs down to first base, but that ball did not hit the dirt. Two down in the fifth. Here we bring up Drew Dant. Third strike out of the ball game for Kale Ballman. Not a huge strikeout pitcher for effective as he's been this year. Just 19 of them in 29 and the third innings coming in. Ball one outside on Drew Dant. Dant's got the biggest hit of the day so far. A two-run double back in the bottom of the first inning. He's two for two. Ball two outside on Dant, the number six hitter for the Fighting Saints. It'll be the bottom of the order, 7, 8, and 9 due up for Calumet when they come up in the sixth. Saints are six outs away from a game one victory. Stant takes a strike, 2 and 1. Swing and a miss. And Bauman is one strike away from setting the side down in the fifth. He has not had a 1 2 3 inning yet today. But he did retire the last three batters of the fourth. And is currently set down five in a row. Ball low, full count. I should mention that he hasn't had a 1-2-3 inning thanks to a caught stealing back in the third. He did face the minimum in that one. Full count pitch. Bomb into Dant. Fouled off to the right. Out of play. Drew Dant will see a seventh pitch. John McGuire waiting to hit next. Hoping for a chance this inning. Calumet's got the momentum. They're trying to keep it that way with a perfect frame. But instead, Bauman misses for ball four. He issues his second walk of the game. And the Saints keep the inning alive with a chance to add some more runs. John McGuire steps in next. McGuire is one for two with an RBI single. It's also grounded out. He flies it foul to the left and out of play. As projected, by the way, the crowd has filled in. I counted four people here at first pitch this afternoon. I think probably 20 people in the stands now. Ball in the dirt. Dant heads down to second base on a wild pitch. It's one and one on McGuire. So a real scoring chance now for the Saints. It was two outs, nobody on. Now all of a sudden there's a runner at second base. One hit from McGuire. Could add one to the lead. Ground ball up the middle. This is playable, though, for Blaze Cano, who takes a step to his left, fields and throws in time. Close play at first base. McGuire was hustling down the line. But the inning is over. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left. To the sixth we go. Six to five, Saints.
Ethan Fleming's day is done. After five innings, he's in line for the victory as the Saints lead the Crimson Wave 6-5. to five. New pitcher is sophomore Jake Jerka. The right-hander is 0-2 with a 16.2 ERA in four games this year. This is just his second relief appearance. Over 13 and a third innings, he's allowed 26 runs, 24 of them earned on 30 hits, with nine strikeouts and six walks. His first pitch is over for strike one on Nicholas Anderson. Anderson is one for two with an RBI single. Right-handed hitting DH takes the next one outside to even the count. Anderson Nichols Barbosa. That's the scheduled trio. We'll see if it plays out that way. There's a high fly into shallow right. Klapash tracks it in towards the line, makes the catch. One away. Yesterday, at least, Brian Nowakowski pinch hit a couple of times for Nino Barbosa in key situations. That's why I suggested the lineup might change. Barbosa is the man in the batter's box, or I should say in the on-deck circle right now. Brennan Nichols is in the batter's box. He's 0 for 1 with a sack fly. Jerka's first pitch to the Calumet catcher is over for strike one. Ball outside. One and one on Nichols. One out, nobody on. The leadoff man has been retired for the first time since the first inning. Calumet's done a great job of getting guys on base early and then scoring them. Strike called on Nichols. One and two. Not only prior to this inning had they gotten their leadoff man on four straight innings, but that guy had scored three of those four. The other time he made it as far as third. Nichols went around, strike three. On the appeal down the first base line, he is called out for having gone too far on the swing. Third strikeout of the ball game for Calumet hitters. And Nino Barbosa is the last hope in the top of the sixth. Final numbers on Ethan Fleming today. He is in line for the victory which would be his first of the season if the score holds. He went five innings and allowed five runs, all of them earned. Ball one outside on Barbosa. Gave up ten hits, but he didn't walk anybody. He struck out two. Called strike, one and one. The lack of walks is huge. He still gave up ten base runners in five innings. Not a great number, but... You throw a couple of walks in there, and you're probably looking at seven or eight runs on the board right now for Calumet. Instead, they still trail. Two and one on Barbosa, the number nine hitter. He swings at this one and lines it into left center field. Long run, Vickers, not able to make the play. He cuts it off on one hop, hurls it back to the infield, but it's a double for Nino Barbosa. And the tying run is in scoring position with two outs in the top of the sixth. Big base hit for Barbosa, his first hit of the game today and his first extra base hit of the season. That gets us back to the top of the order. That also guarantees that Tommy Benson, who's been the team's best run producer this year, will get one more at bat. Darius Little is two for three. He takes a strike. Little went just one for nine combined in yesterday's two games. But he's bounced back in a big way today. A couple of hits and a run scored. There's a called strike, 0-2. Oh Jerka is set for the next pitch on its way. Flown down the right field line, long run Klapash towards foul ground, and it drops foul. Still 0 and 2. Klapash is playing little well into left center field, or right center rather. The entire outfield is shaded towards left, and so that ball hit into foul ground right beyond the bullpen of the Fighting Saints was far out of Klapash's reach. He had a long distance to travel. It did end up landing in play, but he had no chance of getting there. The 0-2. Swing and a miss, and the inning is over. Back-to-back -back innings 
The Crimson Wave strike out with the tying run on base, and Jake Jerka does his job with a scoreless sixth. We'll go to the bottom of the frame. Saints will try to add some insurance to their 6-5 to five lead. Bottom six, the Saints scored six runs in the first inning. Haven't done anything offensively since then. They haven't needed to. But now would be a good time to try to add some help, make it a little bit smoother heading into the seventh as Cliff Vickers fouls off the first pitch for strike one. Vickers is one for two with a double and a run scored. There were two outs, nobody on base in the bottom of the first inning. St. Francis came up with seven consecutive hits and scored six runs. Vickers takes low, one and one. Since then, in the last four innings against Kale Ballman, they've got two hits and no runs. Filed off to the right side, one and two. Game one of a double header. It'll be interesting to see what happens between games as Skies are overcast. There is rain in the forecast. Ball outside, two and two. Last time I checked, the rain was not supposed to last very long. The problem is if you wait for it to go and then start to play after that, there's snow coming in a couple hours later. You don't want to be here too late. Fouled away, still two and two. Vickers, Murda, Martinez. The lineup this inning for the Fighting Saints. It's two and two on Cliff Vickers. He hits a grounder over to Nino Barbosa at second base. Barbosa down to one knee. Fields and throws Vickers out at first. One down. Jake Jerka looked sharp in the sixth inning. So we could see him back out there to try to pick up a two inning save in the seventh. But Zach Blazekovic is also warming up, so we may see him in the seventh. It's still the starter for Calumet. Ball one low on Jake Murda. Kale Bauman, first inning notwithstanding, has pitched really well today. Unfortunately for him, you can't discount an entire inning on the stat line. And so it is going to be an ugly game for him statistically as he misses outside 2-0 oh on Murda. Two for two with two RBIs in the game. It's also going to be a loss for Bauman if his offense can't bail him out in the seventh. So he's counting on them. Ball high, 3-0. and oh. All things considered, though, it's hard to imagine that Brian Nowakowski isn't pretty pleased with what he's gotten out of his starter. 3-1 and one on Murda. He has kept his team in the game. He's eaten innings, saved the bullpen, which is important when you consider there's nine more innings to play today. Murda takes a strike. Full count. But the biggest thing is you're facing a team with a pitching staff that hasn't been great as Murda strikes out swinging two down. Normally you might think as a starting pitcher you need to give up two or three runs to keep your team in the game. Well, your opponents have an ERA collectively over 11. You give up six runs and nothing more, you absolutely have given your team a chance to win. 
And it's worked out that way. Calumet will have three more outs to play with. And at the moment, still just trying to overcome a one-run deficit. Two outs, nobody on. Alex Martinez falls off the first pitch. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a one-run deficit when they do come up. But Bauman is just one out away from getting it there. Alex Martinez is 0 for 2 with a sacrifice bunt. This is his fourth plate appearance. He's behind in the count, nothing and one. And he hits a high pop-up, foul territory just beyond the infield. First baseman, Macknick backs up on it and makes the catch. Inning over, one, two, three, go the Fighting Saints in the sixth. It's the first perfect inning of the game for either pitcher. And we'll go to the seventh, last chance coming up for Calumet St. Joe's. Our score is St. Francis six, Calumet five. It is Zach Blazekovic on to try for his first save of the year. Leading 6-5, to five, Blazekovic comes in for the ninth time. No record, an 871 ERA in 10 and a third innings. He's allowed 15 runs, 10 of them earned on 22 hits, two walks, five strikeouts. And he and the Fighting Saints lead by a run, three outs away from a game one victory. First pitch misses low and away on Blaze Cano, 1-0. Part of the order coming up for Calumet. Cano, Selby, Benson. If anybody reaches, Michael Macknick. Ground ball to the right side. Playable for Alex Martinez. The second baseman throws to first. Cano is retired. And there's the first out of the seventh inning. Saints are now just two outs away from making it three in a row. And giving themselves a chance for back-to-back doubleheader sweeps against Calumet. Six runs in the bottom of the first. That's the entirety of St. Francis' offense today. That's all they've needed. Here's Joseph Selby. 0 for 3. He has reached twice on fielder's choices and scored one run. He takes a strike from Blazekovic. Right-hander on for the second straight day. He threw the final inning of game one yesterday. And he gets ahead of Selby, nothing and two. Jacob Jerka certainly did his job in the sixth inning. Gave up one hit, but nothing more. Two strikeouts in a scoreless frame. Selby strikes out swinging. Chased one up high. Blazekovic has his first strikeout. Fifth of the game for St. Francis pitching, and they are one out away from their third consecutive victory. Trying to improve to five and two in conference play. Last hope for the Crimson Wave is their top slugger, left fielder Tommy Benson. Benson is one for three today, and he takes ball one. Eleven hits in this ball game for Calumet, but they trail. Ball outside, two and zero. Oh. 
They have not been set down in order yet today. They've had at least one hit in every inning. But Blazakovich has retired the first two batters in order. Trying to make it three in a row to wrap this thing up. Line drive at a left center field. We play on as Tommy Benson picks up a big base hit and puts the tying run on base. Second hit of the ball game for Benson. And it comes with their backs against the wall. Now Michael Macknick will try for a big hit to knock him in. Macknick's had a nice game, two for three, a single, a double, an RBI, and a run scored. He swings at the first one, hits it a mile high out into the right field corner, foul territory, and that's out of play. 0-1 the count. So they've got the tying run on base, but one thing they have not done a lot of is pull up big extra base hits. There's been a lot of station to station. Benson's not a real stolen base threat, but just to be safe, Blazakovic wants to keep him close. He hasn't attempted a steal this year, so it's either going to take probably an extra base hit or one more batter to get him home. The 0 1. Fly ball into right field. It's deep, but it looks to be playable. Klepash steps back, makes the catch, and there's your ball game. Saints win 6-5. to five. They led this game 6 to nothing in the first inning, and they coasted the rest of the way. And they did just enough offensively in that first inning to make sure that they could carry home their third consecutive victory. Calumet fought back. They chipped away, but couldn't get the final run they needed to tie this one up and send it to extra innings or get a couple of runs that they would have needed to win the ball game. So it is a final. Third straight win in this weekend series for St. Francis. Let's go back over the scoring for you. It all happened in the first for St. Francis. Two outs, nobody on, and they came up with seven straight hits. Nate Maliska doubled, Jake Lepash singled, Brian Hidalgo singled, Drew Dant hit a two-run double, John McGuire singled home one, Cliff Vickers doubled, and then Jake Murda scored two more runs on a base hit. That made it six to nothing St. Francis. Looked like we were gonna have a real offensive showdown, but no, that was it for the Fighting Saints. The rest of the game, they managed only two hits. They didn't need anything more. For Calumet, their first run came in the second. Perry doubled, scored on a Nichols sack fly. Two more runs scored in the fourth. They got an RBI single from Nicholas Anderson, and then a run scoring ground out from Nino Barbosa. Two more runs in the fifth, an RBI triple for Blaze Cano, and then an RBI single from Michael Macknick. And then they put the tying run on base in the fifth, sixth, and seventh innings, but weren't able to score them. Six to five, the final score. All, our totals for today, Calumet five runs, 12 hits, one error. St. Francis six runs, nine hits, no errors. The winning pitcher is Ethan Fleming. He went five innings, and he improves to one and three on the season. The losing pitcher, the starter, for Calumet, I want to call him a tough luck loser because he looked so good after the first inning. But he did give up those six runs in the first inning, so it wasn't strictly luck that cost him the game today. He went the distance, but Bauman falls to 2-2 two and two on the season. With the win, the Fighting Saints are now 7-12, 5-2 in conference. With the loss, Calumet 11-16. They fall under 500, 4-5 in CCAC play. Game two of the doubleheader coming up just after 3 o'clock, maybe 3.10-ish. We'll have that one for you here as well, as long as the weather holds up. For right now, plan on being back around 3.05, 3.10 for game two of today's Twin Bills. The Saints look for back-to-back -back sweeps. Once again, our final today, 6-5, to St. Francis on top. For now, Terry Bonadonna signing off. I'll talk to you soon. Game two coming up.